Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name's Nasto. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna make this uh, video. It's basically just gonna be an info dump about almost everything I know about mounting TVs and making money with it. I use I do it on TaskRabbit. I used to do it on um, on an app called Tackle, but they shut down operations when the pandemic hit. There's also other apps like Pulse. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Am Amazon Home Services might do it. I'm not sure, but uh, mainly I do it on TaskRabbit and. Um, I'm just gonna show you real quick uh, the tools you need, and then I'll show you how to do it, all right? So let me show you the, the tools you need, hold on. All right. Okay, so here's the, basically the tools you're gonna need. Let me just go through them all real quick. So you're gonna need a mount. Usually the mount comes with all the hardware you need, but in some rare cases, like the person moved and they have like the old mount, and in that case, it's good to have extra hardware from previous mount jobs you did. So, you know, if you, if you do a, a new mount, it comes with a, with a, you know, an array of, of different uh, screws for different configurations. So if you hang up a new TV, a new uh, a mount, a new mount, uh, you could ask the client, you know, let them know like, hey, these are extra for different, uh, different TVs. Uh, do you mind if I keep it? So you do that a couple times and you end up with like, this is, this is not even all I have. You end up with a bunch, a bunch of extra ones. So in this case, you know, this is an old mount. So I'm glad I have these, um, you know, because different TVs take different screws in the back of the TV for the, for the mount. So that's a, that's a tip right there. You're gonna need a tape measure. You're gonna need a screwdriver. This is for my, for my impact driver, but you're gonna need a screwdriver because, you know, that's how you attach the back of the, uh, they're usually a, a Phillips head on, on the back of the TV. You're gonna need either a half inch or a 10 millimeter it's, this seems to be the most common sizes i think i've seen maybe one other weird size but it's usually the lag bolts where are they the lag bolts it's usually it's usually half inch or 10 millimeter for the small ones so you're gonna need um that you're gonna need if you're gonna mount into into wood you're gonna need uh wood drill bits to make the hole for the lag for the mount i mean for the uh lag bolt and you want to just make sure you got the right one so you so you just line it up with this uh with the bolt and you want just the the threads to stick out i'm doing it i'm trying to do it with one hand but uh you see how like just the threads stick out so the the size of the drill bit is the size of the shaft of this and that's that's the, that's the kind you use um for the for you know and you need a, a ratchet you either need a ratchet set with the 10 millimeter and the half inch or you need an impact gun with with you know the, the adapter to be able to use one of these uh those uh these what do you call those um dr uh, bits whatever you also need a drill for the you know for drilling the hole for the lag bolt you need a stud finder to find the stud a pencil to mark it these or what I use for when I have a, a metal metal studs, uh, flip toggles. You make a hole in the metal stud, and then you you also need some little washers. These are washers for these because these, these don't come with washers. And sometimes like uh, this hole right here in, in the mount, it will be big, and and that kind of screw kind of looks like it's it's about to go in. So you just want to make sure you have a washer on that. And now also. This is if you if you're doing a, a metal metal studs, you want to get a step up drill a step up uh, drill bit like this, and it goes from you know whatever small size all the way up to a half an inch, because these flip toggles require a half an inch opening in order to go in go in and insert. So this makes it a lot easier. If you have a, a drill bit set that cuts through metal, then you know you can start off with a small one and work your way up to a to a half inch uh, drill bit. I ba I recently just got this like a month ago you know and, and before that i was i was i was doing it the other way i have a metal drill bit set and i just i just step it up you know with a small one goes in really easily and then slightly bigger slightly bigger slightly bigger so these are basically oh and uh you need a, a dust pan i'll show you guys why but sometimes i don't have a dust pan i just grab a piece of paper or like the instructions from the from the tv mount and that's just to catch uh, a lot of the dust off, off the holes that you're gonna be drilling. So let me show you uh, how to put it onto the back of the TV. Okay guys, so usually what I do is I find, um, when I get to the client's house, I always inspect the TV first 
Sometimes they have a brand new TV still in the box and you want to just make sure you open it and make sure the screen's not cracked. Because several times, you know, a couple times I've opened it and the screen was cracked and I showed them right away. A couple times I hung up the mount, I did everything. And then when I put the TV up is when I noticed that the TV was cracked. And you want you want to just open it and inspect to make sure it's not cracked because you, you don't want them thinking that it's your fault. So, but here I am at the back of the TV. You know, I got these things from the TV mount. I usually, I usually put these first. Um, you want to have a spacer between them. If it's if it's the kind of a mount that extends with the arm, then the spacer is not really necessary. But if it's any kind of flat mount, then you want to just make sure you get some some spacers, which are they usually they usually come with the with the uh, with the TV mount hardware. So just make sure you put put those in, find the correct screw, and uh, attach those, and then uh, I'll show you I'll show you what's next. Okay, guys. So I got it on. You see, I put a, a spacer. Uh, make sure you put a washer and then the screw make sure the knobs are on the outside any kind of adjustment knob any kind of little uh, allen wrench that you're supposed to stick in there make sure you put it on the outside and um you know that usually the hook it hooks in from the top and then clicks in from the bottom so that's it you know and that's it's good to have a bunch of like extra 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 hardware because sometimes the tvs are different size like you know they're they're lower here and higher in the back and you need different size uh, spacers to make it work. So you know, I've done I've done things like that where I, I put extra spacers in the the top one or the bottom one, and I've even I've even uh, when I didn't have that many to choose from, I would like cut uh, the spacer in half to make it fit uh, so that it would fit uh, so that it would go flat it, it would go parallel to the TV, and then you put the you put the mount on just kind of just kind of mock 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 in place so that you can measure it so then you know from the bottom of the mount to the bottom of the of the tv see like right here it's uh hold up sorry about that right here's eight inches and about three fourths so eight eight and three fourths inch of an inch uh, from from the bottom of the tv to the mount Okay guys, what you need to know next is where on the wall the, the client wants the TV. So now that you know that to the bottom of the TV is eight and three fourths, you can ask them, you can put the tape measure down and ask them uh, where they want the bottom of the TV to start. It's usually somewhere around 40 inches, you know, give or take somewhere around there when they're sitting down on the couch. It's a good, uh, it's a good line of sight. Another thing I like to do is, is kind of measure the the actual height of the TV, and that, that, that way I have it, and I can show them like where where they would want the, the bottom of the TV to start, and mark that off. And then when you mark that off, you know that eight and three fourths of a, of a eight and three fourths of an inch higher than that is where the bottom of the mount should be, and you just mark that. You mark where they want it, then you measure the eight inches, and then you mark where the bottom of the of the the, the mounting bracket is going to be. So let me go ahead and do that. Another thing I got to say is um. That's usually for like living room when they're sitting down. Um, and this is a bedroom, and the bedrooms usually usually higher because they're usually above a dresser or they're laying down on the TV, so they want to be able to higher and tilt it down so they can see from from the TV. But the forty inch rule that's usually usually sitting down uh, on the couch, and you don't want them too high. A lot of people want it really high, and it kind of it doesn't look as good when you're sitting down on the couch. And uh, unless it's above a fireplace or something like that, you can't help it. But uh, you don't want to go much higher than I would say like 45 inches. You don't want to go much higher than that. So let me go ahead and uh, mark this off. This, this is why I said you needed a pencil. So I want, I want the bottom of the TV. I, see these, I had, I had a dresser here and those were, uh, these are two uh, studs that are already marked. That's where we, we secured the dresser to the wall. So I already know there's a stud here and there's a stud there, but uh, Say I, I want the bottom of the TV to be, because this is above a bed, I want it to be at 54 inches. Then I'll just measure eight and a quarter inches above that. And I know that's where my mount, my mount needs to be, the bottom of my mount. So then uh, you could have, you could, you know, you could put it right there. I, and one thing, of course, I, I totally forgot to tell you guys, you need a, a level. Uh, let me go ahead and grab mine real quick. OK, 
Okay guys, so yeah, I have my, the bottom of where I want the TV mark, and I got the bottom of where my, my mounting, my mounting, uh, uh, my mount should be. And then you want to have a, a mount to be able to, you want to have a level in order to make, make sure it's, uh, it's level. But before I do that, you got to find, uh, you got to find the stud. So I know there's a stud here, but let's just say they wanted it here. I, I now I know where, where the bottom of the bracket should be. I should just look for a, a stud somewhere in this area. And it's a, uh, it could be a little tricky trying to find the stud. See like there's one right there. And basically the rule is there's studs every 16 inches on center. So from the center of one stud to the center of another stud is 16 inches. And if you're having a hard time, a couple of tricks is uh, where the, the outlets are, there's, there's usually a stud either to the right or the left of it, that that's what the box is attached to. So you might want to go down and, and search, search near the box to see if, uh, if you could spot where the, if you could spot where the, where the stud is. And then from there, you just measure 16 inches and, and try to see if you could find the stud, you know, you know, there's a stud here, then measure 16 inches and then try to try to look for a stud somewhere around there. In some commercial buildings, like with the metal studs, they, they do have some that are 24 inches apart, but that's, it's kind of, it's pretty rare. So, uh, I know that, that I, I, this is where I want it. I know there's a stud here. So I match that one, I, I go ahead and mark it. Also, yeah, don't be afraid to do a, a knock test. And you know, where it's hollowed, you know, there's not a stud where it's more uh, of a thud, you know, that's where the stud is and it gives you a, it's not, it's not, it's not a, you know, it's not uh, precise, but it gives you an idea of where to uh, search for the stud. So mark uh, where, where the lights turn on. So this thing is telling me that there's a, it's, it's always, it's, it's, it's never too precise guys. So with, with these uh, sensors. So you guys kind of, you know, check and double check, make a, make, you know, once you're almost certain, make a hole and take a look at uh, what you find behind it. So now that I know where the studs are, now I could uh, see where I'm gonna put this, uh, this TV mount. Now this is a small TV mount and it actually only has one, one point of, of, uh, of anchoring it. Usually the mounts, this is a really old one, usually the mounts are 16 inches wide and they have a hole here, hole here, and they're 16 inches apart, so it's usually able to hit two studs. But uh, this one only has one, one anchoring point, so I'm just gonna use one stud to anchor to it, and it's gonna be this one over here. Now, uh, right now I'm kind of rushing it, guys. It's my, it's my house. I'm, I'm just trying to get this quick before my kid, uh, you know, causes too much ruckus and I have to go take care of him. So it's not as precise as. Uh, as it would be for a play, for a paying customer, but just uh, get on the stud. Okay, guys. So now, when you got it level, just go ahead and mark the hole where the studs are. You know, you you uh, you know you know where the where the you mark where the stud is. So you you mark the holes that fall inside that stud, and uh, now I'll show you how to make those holes and and get actually get the leg bolts in. Okay guys, so usually uh, you would have four of these on, on the studs. Now let me talk real quick about the mounts. Like this one has a single single anchor point. Um, the, any, like any, there's some ones that have the arm that swings out and they only have one little, uh, they only have one line of anchoring. And those, you have, you have to make sure that you get into a stud because uh, they, come, they cost so much leverage. If you put them only into drywall, they'll rip out. So for those, you want to always make sure that you let the customer know, like, hey, this one goes into a, a this one has to go into a stud. If you have one of the like the rectangular ones, and one for some whatever reason one doesn't hit the stud, you still have one that's hitting the stud, and on the other one, if it's drywall, you could use some of those flip toggles, and you still have a lot of uh, security because you got the whatever the flip toggles hold in drywall, and plus one that's anchored to the to the mount to the stud. Ideally, you want to always try to get two studs, and with the the single one with the arm that swings out, 
just let them know that it has to go into a stud so it might not it might not align perfectly with where they want it and just let them know ahead of time like hey you want it right here centered but the stud is off to the side a little bit you only do so and it has to go into a stud so either you get buy a new a new mount that has that has the rectangular thing um so that it could go exactly where you want it or we can put it to here and it's going to be slightly off i mean when you when you can move the arm and you know you could center it with the arm but it's not going to be flat to the wall because once it's flat to the wall then it's 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 going to be where it's going to be you know so just let them know that and usually you know when you do when you do the rectangular mounts you have uh, four of these you know you have uh, two on each side so this is where you need either a dustpan or just a piece of paper and uh let me just show you guys And then you have to you have your things marked just right in the middle. Just go ahead and just drill a hole. Oh snap! Hold on, I got it, I got it on hammer mode, which uh, I'll tell you guys about in a little bit. But just go ahead uh, and either put your dustpan or your piece of paper. Just put it underneath it. Okay guys, so I was gonna I was gonna take this out, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it because this really happens uh, more often than yeah, I like to admit. But uh, I got like a a false reading and a false sense on on where the stud is. The stud is actually over here, and I confirmed that from from where the light light post is. But I also I got a reading on this one, and um, that just happens because uh, just a, just a variety of different things, especially on older houses and the houses with the with the plaster walls it's, it's almost it's a, it's pretty um hard to pinpoint exactly where the where the studs are on those old old walls because they're handmade so they have like uh thick spots and low spots and that could set it off and they have they have the the wooden part behind the plaster wall and so that throws it off so it's kind of hard to on the pla old plaster walls it's kind of hard to find where the studs are but you you'll get the hang of it and stuff like that now this one I thought the stud was here. It even sounded like it was, but the stud's actually over here. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and move the, the mount over. Now, luckily, like, a, especially with the rectangular mounts, like, there's a hole there now, but it's gonna get covered with the, with the mount. So that's gonna be... So yeah, there's a hole, but Often, oftentimes you could cover it. If if you can't cover it, then you know it's, it's a good idea to carry some some uh, drywall, some of the little the, the little uh, little tub of uh, not the little like the really tiny small tub of the joint compound for drywalls, so you can fill up holes and you know and uh, people don't usually care because it's behind the TV behind the mount, like you know it doesn't really uh, affect them too much, but. Yeah, let's try that again, guys. You know, I was gonna take it out. I was gonna take it out because I look dumb, but it may, it's gonna happen to you, trust me. All right, so attempt number two. See, so like right there, right there we, we did hit the stud. And it's giving, it's giving some resistance, that's how you know. And also you see like when you when you hit the stud you get a, a lot of wood shavings uh, I know a problem with this is this uh, drill bit that I have is really old and and dull um, when they're when, when it's new like it's uh, it's too dull it, it usually doesn't give me that much trouble when when I have a new drill bit. So, but yeah, now the holes are drilled. They are the size. They are the size to fit the uh, lag bolts. All right, guys. So yeah, so now the holes are drilled for the, the things. So and now you can put this up. You got your lag bolts. Make sure you have the washer on there. 
and just uh, I usually start it off like hand tight. Oh, hold on. I think I the letters are upside down in the mount. I think it doesn't matter because this one's reversible, but might as well get it right, right? So go ahead. And to tighten these down, you either need the ratchet, like I said, with the half inch drive, with the half inch, um, what do you call it? Yeah, I, I totally spaced on what it's called. But you either need the half inch uh, ratchet or you could have an impact gun like this one. A drill usually uh, usually gives out because it's, it's, a, it's a lag bug going into wood. It's too much resistance. The, the drills usually uh, can't push it all the way in, but this is an impact gun. And this will the impact driver, and it will push it in. But usually, what I like to do is, if, if the the people are there, I'll just give them a heads up, say, "Hey, this is kind of loud. This next part's kind of loud. Just you know, make sure your baby doesn't get startled, or your dogs don't get startled." I'm gonna show you why. So yeah, if you're this is a heads up. Uh, cover your ears, guys. To tighten it down completely, just make sure it's level while you're doing it. And that's it, then the mount is up. Now that the mount is up, you could uh, hook, go ahead and hook on the TV. Uh, a couple of things I wanna tell you guys. So the metal studs, when it's metal studs, what I like to do is I like to take the half inch uh, drill bit and just clear out and where I'm gonna make the hole. I just, I use the drill, that half inch drill bit to clear out the drywall. So that could use that one step bit. And then I, I do like a, a small hole. And then I use that step bit to step in, into all into the, into the half inch size. And that way I can put the flip toggle in. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the TV, hook the TV up on this. And that's basically it, uh, cement for cement or brick. You need uh, to make holes in cement and brick, you're gonna use the little plastic sleeves that they provide with the mount. And you're gonna need uh, a drill that has a hammer function. You see right like right here, this one has a little, the little hammer thing is because I could switch it over to to hammer mode and it actually hammers in while it's, it, it you know, gives you like a little percussion while you're, while you're, while it's twisting in, you know? And that makes, and you need the masonry drill bits for it. That's gonna be this, the, the masonry drill bit, you want it, the head of it to be this size so that you can make a hole this uh, this size, put this in, uh, hammer this in there, and then use the depth, the lag bolts and the, it'll be super secure on, on concrete. So yeah, you wanna do that for, for the cement. And it's the same thing guys, only on the cement, obviously you wanna, you know, measure three times before you before you start drilling because it's, 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 it's more permanent than, than anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this TV up and I'll show you guys what's up. All right, guys, so it hooks up from the top and then it clicks down. This is, like I said, this is a really old mount. Usually they click. This one doesn't click. You have to manually uh, move the little lever, but uh, it's in. And uh, it's usually, I usually at least just put the power cord in just because it's easier. But if it's, the one with the arms that stick out, like, you know, you don't have to put any kind of cords before you before you hang it up. But sometimes with the really flat ones, it might help you to put the power cord in and an HDMI cable in before you hook it up. And uh, if you need help because it's a, it's a big TV, you could ask the client for help and they're usually more than willing to help. But just know that, it, you know, if they if they drop it, even if it's on purpose, the liability is on you, you're, you're responsible for it. Uh, really what you should be, you should really have a, Liability insurance, you know, any kind of general liability insurance for this. TaskRabbit used to supply like some kind of uh, insurance, but then 
it was too much of a like an employee kind of problem so they stopped doing that now they have like a happiness pledge where like supposedly they to keep the client happy they'll pay up to like five ten thousand dollars only or something like that and it's it's never been good because i mean it's never been like uh actual insurance because they what they rely on is the homeowner has to go through their homeowner's insurance first and if the homeowner's insurance denies it then tax revenue used to pay out but you don't want you don't want your client doing that because then their premiums and everything goes up so uh, if if I were you, I would have general liability insurance in case you drop a TV and you could just uh, write a write a claim. And if uh, you don't, I would just offer to pay. And even if you have a general liability insurance, sometimes if it's a five hundred dollar TV, it's gonna be cheaper for you to just buy buy them a new TV than than to make a claim in the long run. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. That's all you need to start making t my money mounting TVs. There's not much to it. It's just uh, making, making sure you have the right tools and uh, taking your time, measuring everything, measuring everything twice. The stud, finding the studs is usually the, the hardest part. Make sure you have a, a good stud finder and uh, you, you're able to distinguish, you know, if it's something's too small of a stud, they might be a, an electrical uh, conduit tube. Uh, that's the biggest, you know, that's the biggest uh, danger, I guess, you know, being uh, making a hole in electrical and shorting the circuit out or making a hole in the water pipe and, and um, you know, having a water leak. But I mean, I mean, it's very rare, guys, that you can, you'd be able to hit something like that. They usually have plates or something to cover it. Uh, but always, always uh, be careful with that. I mean, there's times when I've, I mean, like if you drill a hole and you, you feel something, something that shouldn't be, you know, like stop drilling, you know, it's not. You're not gonna drill through everything. If you drill a hole, like when I when I did the stud and I hit that, I, I knew it was wood, but if but you know you should take your drill out anyway before it starts going in and just make sure it's not white. If it's white, then it might be the then it's uh, the PVC piping, you know, which it might be like a, a drain or a or a water water uh, a water uh, tube or whatever, you know. Uh, that's it, guys. I'm I'm, I'm charging like. Uh, I'm charging the client sixty dollars an hour with a one and a half hour minimum, so it's ninety dollars. I get out of that, I get paid seventy six dollars. And uh, on tackle, I used to get paid like seventy two dollars. They they went by sizes, so from a certain size to a certain size, you got paid like sixty five. From fifty five inch and up, you got paid like seventy two or something, like seventy five dollars, something like that. So it's always good. It's always uh, decent money because it never takes me long. Even right now that I'm I'm doing this with you guys. Uh, trying to film this and going back and reshooting and everything like that like it still hasn't taken me long to do this so you know if you want to expand your skills on Tash Rabbit or if you want to get started on Tash Rabbit uh, don't be afraid to I would say maybe hang up all the TVs in your house first you know that that'll give you enough practice on uh, on Amazon the mounts are like 20 bucks so you could definitely you could definitely start off and practicing yourself so uh, that's it guys I'll see you guys in the next video